Well, I do want to honor the man of God tonight. I am so grateful that you are here, you and your beautiful husband, you precious, precious people. And you brought one of my favorite people on this planet with you. And I mean that sincerely with all of my heart. I'm so thankful to be here. And uh, I'm just so thankful to be here. But as the man of God comes, if you're able to stand, will you stand in honor of the man of God and the word of God? Because we are so grateful that they're here. Pastor, come. Amen. Take your liberty. Obey the Lord. We're so excited you're here. I love you. I love you so much. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm a little bit old school. Some of y'all, I don't know how you're going to take to me. I come from a little bit different. I heard somebody play with a tambourine earlier. Yes, that's right. He was. Can I borrow your tambourine for a minute? Can I use it for a minute? Awesome. Cool. Thank you. I've got one in the church, but I forgot to bring it tonight. All right. But all the way here, how many of y'all remember the night or the day or the morning you got the Holy Ghost? Yes, I did. I'll tell you, I remember. I remember the day. What a glorious day. I was five years old. Praise God. We had an evangelist come to our church. I was always a little precocious. So I was five, but in my head I was ten. You know. <laughs> so we had an evangelist come through, and he was preaching about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And he said, if we wanted it, come down to the altar, pray for a while. So I got down in the altar and I prayed for a while. And guess what happened? Yeah. At five years old, Woo! God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to use his little timbre the best I can. Yeah. But there's an old song I like to sing. Go something like this. I was tearing in the altar when the fire fell. When the fire fell. When the fire fell. I was tearing in the altar when the fire fell. When the Lord baptized me. I was tearing in the altar when the fire fell. When the fire fell. When the fire fell. It's a 
simple phrase. Stay in your old way. Amen. Facebook and yeah right. Who are ten more people trying to tell me you shouldn't have wrote that on Facebook? Mm. Stay in your lane. Right. Stay in your lane. My Bible says if somebody offends you, you're supposed to go to them. Right. Now I'm gonna you, I get tired of Christians telling me they believe the Bible. But they don't want to act the Bible way. This preacher, I'm going to tell you, you ask Brother Tim. He's been with us a few months now in Nashville. You ask him. This preacher believes not only in claiming to believe the Bible, but I actually believe in doing things the Bible way. So if I have somebody says something, gets out of their lane, and gets up in my lane, and starts getting in my face, I don't go with him on Facebook timeline. Yeah. Right. I don't have a public disagreement with him. Right. right. Take, right. Let me fill y'all in on a little secret. Facebook has messaging. Come on. Right. Right. You can send somebody a private right. message. That's right. That's right. And some of these people that have gotten off of the out of their lane and into my lane right. have right. done so on my Facebook page. Right. You don't do that. Right. Amen. You don't correct somebody. No. You don't tell somebody no. they shouldn't have said this or they shouldn't right. have felt that right. or True. they shouldn't, you know. You don't do that on their page. On. And, you know, first of all, you get out of your way. So right. shut up. Yeah. 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 You really have something to say to them that's important. Go to them privately. Go to them in a private message. Amen. And I've told people in a private message, I said, you know, um, you, you come at me on my page the other day about something I wrote, and I'm going to be honest with you, I really feel like you stepped out of your lane, right. and you stepped into mine, and yeah. I was nice about it. Yeah. I said, yeah. but um, I just want to let you know from here on out, let's not do that. Yeah. Right. 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 Let's not do that. Okay. Come on. First of all, if you got anything to say, you ought to come at me privately. Right. That's right. That's right. Because I'm not going to embarrass somebody on their page. Come on, right. come on. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I see people on Facebook all the time. I don't know why I'm talking about this, Brother Sunday, but right. I, come on. I see people on Facebook all the time. They post some nasty stuff. Right. And yeah. then True. the next post that's Hallelujah Praise the Lord. of themselves in the underwear. Yeah. Uh, Tomorrow they got a right. picture of themselves raising their hands. Right, 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 right. Now I'm going to tell you, I don't say anything to them. I don't say a word to them. I don't. Right, right. I stay in my lane. Yeah, yes, sir. yeah. Yes, sir. It's not my job really to fix everybody. It's right. not my job. No, let me tell you something. What my job as the preacher of the gospel is, is to lead people into a closer walk with Amen. God. Amen. You Come get on. to Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. The closer the moon is to the sun, the brighter the moon appears. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. The closer you get to Jesus, yes. the more you will reflect Him. Amen. The more you will look like Him. The more you will act like Him. So my job is not to come at you and try to fix you. My job is to help you get closer to the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you, you get closer to the Lord, and some of that old ugly stuff drops off. Yes, it does. Well, some of that old wicked Thank stuff you. falls off. That's true. That's true. And some of the good stuff catches yeah. up. on leading people, you know, into the Lord. Come I don't on. focus on trying to fix people. Right. right, right. I've been doing affirming ministry now for 31 years. Praise God. Right. I'm probably, right. God. Thank you. probably one of the longest in this movement. Uh, 
I know there are a few that have been around a little bit longer than me. But I'm going to tell you, I've been doing this a long time. It's been hard. I started down in ministry many years ago in the mainstream. I pastored in the Church of God, headquartered in Cleveland, Tennessee. Yes. And then I came later into the apostolic movement as a young man in my early 20s. I've been preaching Jesus' name ever since and yes. don't have any intention of stopping. Amen. 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 Right. Oh, I'm going to tell you, when God shows it to you, you've seen it. Hallelujah. Right. That's why I don't try to preach that into people's heads either. Come on. Let God show it to them. Because I'll tell you what, once God shows it to you, sweetheart, you'll never right, lose it. Right, right, you'll right. never lose it. You'll never deny Come it. On. You'll never turn from it. Right, right, right. Amen. Praise but in my early ministry days, I knew what it was. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew what it was <laughs> to. Yeah, I don't know if it's losing power or what it is, but hello, hello. Yeah, oh, I had full battery while I was I got a loud mouth. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, okay. Let's try this one for a In my early ministry days, uh, I experienced great success, and I mean tremendous success. And my first church I started, I was 19 years old. I was the youngest pastor in the Southern New England District of the Churches of God. And in a year's time, I told my overseer, God told me we'd have 100 people. And in a year's time, by God, we had over right. 100 people. Right. And that was from scratch, honey. I mean, that was from, yeah. we never had a home Bible study. We never had a home prayer meeting. Uh -uh. I ran into a place to worship, went around town, handed out flyers. And our first service, we had 13 people. All right. Eight of those Thank people Lord. walked up to me after the service, eight of them, the adults, because there were two children in that number. And eight adults came up to me after my very first service, my very first church. And they said to me, will you be our full-time pastor? All right, all right, all right. After the first service. Amen. And I said, if you can believe God, I'll believe God. All How about that? All right. we'll that Come on. And I've made a lot of sacrifices in my life and in my ministry. When my first church, I lived in a little office complex, in a little uh, office suite in this old Oddfellows building. I asked the owner, I said, would it be possible, could I actually use that little suite? Three little rooms probably didn't total as much room as this room right here. No, wow. But there were three little rooms attached. I said, would you mind terribly if I used that to live in? Because it was only at the time like $150 a month. And even back in the middle, um, it was... <laughs> You know, that was a good, probably a lot cheaper than an apartment. Right. And I would go to my grandparents' house and I'd bathe and all that at my grandparents' house. And, you know, it wasn't the easiest arrangement, but it was the cheapest. Right. Yeah. And I said, if these people want to support me as their pastor, and uh, I'll do whatever I have to do to make that possible. And God blessed us. And in a year's time, we had over 100 people. Praise God. And we had a move of God. Thank you, Jesus. That would blow your mind. Praise God. And I can say that honestly, because I'm not bragging about me. I didn't hear me say nothing about me. Right, right, I said right, we right. had a move of God. Right. That's right. Man. We had, brother, we had people being healed like Thank you want to believe. You, Praise God. Our church became known in the Lord. community. Amen as a place where you could find your healing. All right. And this was back in the heat of the charismatic movement. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is back when charismatic movement was running hot, especially in New England where my first church was. And I'm going to tell you, so I had people come into my church from the charismatic churches that thought they had the Holy Ghost only to find out they didn't. Uh -huh, come on. I'm going to tell you that it's possible to have a tongues experience. Uh, come on, 
You get some old lady beating on the back of your head and some old man yanking on your tongue. You got somebody saying, say Coca-Cola real fast. Yeah. You get all this, all this foolishness. Right, right. You can have a tongues and experience. Right, right. And then you get some ding away standing there screaming, you got you got it. You right. ain't got nothing. Right. Come on. All you had was a tongueless experience. Amen. I had people come up to me and tell me after church, they said, Brother, I got the Holy Ghost tonight. Said, I thought I had it. Yeah, yeah. Come but on. But I found out tonight that I didn't. Because when the yes, real thing my. came, oh, I'm going to tell you, the counterfeit was yeah. exposed. Yeah. Oh, when the real thing shows up, in from charismatic churches and that happened over and over again they said I thought I had the Holy Ghost but I found out tonight I didn't how did I find out because I got it tonight praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord anyway I need to shut up and preach because God gave me a message I come from the old school I don't sit down and pull a scripture out of the Bible that I read this week and kind of look cute to me and God. I thought I'd pull a sermon out. That's not how this preacher operates. I operate in the prophetic. I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. Come on. Praise God. I do. God told me when he called me at eight years old in the pew of that little assembly of God church I grew up in in southern New England. He called me to preach when I was eight years old. And he told me, he said, you're going to have a prophetic ministry. I said, oh, great. What's that? <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and I learned over time. I studied. I prayed. I found out yeah, that yeah. it means when a preacher declares, thus saith yeah, the Lord. Right, that's it, right. that's it. And you cannot yes, declare, be. thus saith the Lord. Uh, come on. Listen to me, children. Yeah. Say, preacher, why do you call God's people children? I'll tell you why. Because the Bible said, except you become as a little child. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you know, sometimes we need to be reminded yeah. that he's the father of yeah. the children. Yeah. And that's why I call God's people children. Yeah. I remind my church every Sunday, y'all are the children. Y'all are the kids. Don't get in daddy's way. Right. Right. Don't be trying to do what daddy right. does. Right. You ain't daddy. You're the kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now. Stay in your lane. Right. <laughs> I won't wear that out tonight, I'll tell you. <laughs> but I'll tell you, uh, a prophetic preacher cannot preach if he has not heard from God. Right. That's right. right. Brother right. Sonny asked me to preach. Well. 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 <laughs> now this one's wanting to go no, on. <laughs> That's all right. I'll, I couldn't talk loud enough, I'm sure. Oh, Sorry. Right. Y'all can hear me. Yeah. I'm yeah. a big mouth. <laughs> no, uh, no, we didn't say all this. <laughs> 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 Stay in your place. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, when Brother Sonny asked me to preach, almost immediately the Holy Ghost spoke to my spirit and said, here's the message. Praise God. Right, and I want right. you to preach. And uh, I love when he does that because even in my own church on Sunday, yeah. there are sometimes the Lord gives me a message practically a week before. There are times yeah. he'll give me three messages in one week. And then I have to pray about, well, when do I preach which right? Right, right. 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 Literally. I'm yeah. not, I don't want to. I don't want to speak a word out of turn. Right. I want to make sure that I preach the word He's given me for that moment. Amen. That's right. yeah. Because somebody He knows who's going to be yeah. the only. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. He knows who needs to hear what I'm going to say. Amen. So if He gives me more than one, I'm sorry, Lord. Now you need to tell me when do I preach this one? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
But then there are times when I'll go all week and Lord. I'll be praying, Lord, I need a message, Lord, and Come I'm on. not hearing anything. I'm not uh -huh. hearing anything. I'm not hearing anything. Yeah. Then all of a sudden on Saturday, he decides to drop it in my chair. <laughs> right. uh -huh. So thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you just love toying with me. <laughs> right. Here I was sitting to the pulpit thinking I was gonna have to bow out and tell <laughs> folks I had I have literally in pastoring over the last years, I have lived, I, I was pastoring long before I came out and started my affirming ministry, so 31 years in affirming ministry, but another years before that. <laughs> and and uh, there were times I had to get up in front of my church and tell them, folks, I don't have a message. Yeah. And if I don't have a message, I don't preach. Right, right. right. I have nothing to say. Who am I? What, what, what have right, I got? Right, 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 right. That's going to benefit God's people. If I haven't heard from heaven, I have nothing to pass along. Right, right. right, right. Of course, the wonderful thing about God is a lot of times when I have been, what I thought were dry spells, the, the whole reason he didn't give me a message because we weren't going to need one that Sunday. Yeah, right. Right, right. right. That's the truth. Uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. need one. He right. was going to come yep. down yes. and the Holy Ghost was going to fall Woo! and Amen. there wasn't going to be no need for preaching right. anyway. Amen. Amen. Yes. I'd go home and I'd say, well, there you go, Lord. Now I see why you didn't give me a message. Right. 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 This was one of them come Sundays on. where no preaching was necessary. Right. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you join me today, I don't want to, I can get talkative at times. That's a weakness of mine. I don't want to drag it out on you there. 1 Samuel 17, a passage of scripture that I know most of you are very, very familiar with. <clears throat> it is the story of David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's lengthy, but I'm going to read a portion of it to get us started. 1 Samuel 17, 1 through 11. I also want to explain, brother, I couldn't come in while the lights were out because I'm old. Put me in the dark room and you'll hear me snore. <laughs> I, cannot I, I go to the movies and I've told Tommy, I said, man, if this thing don't grab me in the first 10 minutes, you're going to hear me snoring. <laughs> <laughs> so that film had better get my attention. <laughs> I slept through all the Batman movies. Oh my God. <laughs> you remember those, how dark the sets were? You know, they were in God. Everything was so dark, you know. The sets were so Man, Batman hadn't even seen his first light in the sky before I was I don't do well in the dark. Oh, I had to wait till the lights come up, all right? Amen. First Samuel 17, verses 1 through 11. I read today from the King James text. Yes, I preach from the King James text. Amen. I'm going to tell you right, a secret. Right. There are some people who think that we affirming preachers are afraid of the Bible. Come on. No, no. Not if you know it. That's right. right. Uh, right. Not if you know it. Don't right. scare me in the least. I Come got on. news for you. The King James text don't bother me no kind of way. Right. right. Come on. I don't I have a problem. There are some churches nowadays want to do with the you know, do away with the King James. And we need to go with a more modern version. Listen, they ain't nothing like Shakespeare. <laughs> True. Promise, they ain't nothing like Shakespeare. When you were in school and they wanted you to study Shakespeare, you know, you had to dig in to understand. understand. You had to spend a little time. You had to put a little effort in. Got news for you. Never hurt you to dig in. Right. Never hurt you to put a little effort in. Right. Never hurt you to go out and buy you a concordance and look up some words. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because words that were used in the era of King James are not used in the same way today. Right. There are many, many, many words we read in the King James text 
that are not used as they are today. That's true. Psalm 47, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph, for the Lord most high is terrible. <laughs> right. He's terrible. <laughs> Why, that's awful. <laughs> what a terrible thing. To, what? Terrible? <laughs> yeah. You see, we don't use terrible in the same way that right. did in right. That, right. Right. at that time in history. At that time in history, the word terrible simply meant awe-inspiring. That's mm -hmm. right. When we say something strikes terror, we mean it makes you afraid, it makes right. you fearful. Right. But in the era of King James, terrible simply meant it was awe-inspiring. Right. There are many times in the King James text, I'm going to give you a quick lesson in LGBT-affirming theology. There are many times in the King James text where you read the word men. And if you are foolish enough to simply accept it at face value, you're going to lose out big time. Yeah. Because in King James era, the term men often meant everything from the community right. to people That's right. or humanity in general. Right. For instance, in Genesis 19, where you read about Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nickel for every time some straight, straight somebody who couldn't stay in their lane decided they wanted to slide over into mine and try to fix me and tell me, well, there's God, he is in 19, I got shot right in the back and said, you ignoramus, Genesis 19, don't say nothing near. Right. That's right, right. When the word of the Lord said, in one verse in Genesis 19, I want to say it's verse 4, three times the word, or excuse me, two times the word men appears. Uh -huh. Says that the men of Sodom surrounded Lot's house. Says all the men of Sodom. Yep, that's what it says. And then the third time around it says all the people from every quarter. That's right. Got news for you. If you look up the word men that is twice used, it means people. Right, right. right. It means the community. So literally, it was not a bunch of homo men. Right. It was right. a right. community. It was men yeah. and women. That's exactly right. The whole they, yeah. they were having a religious orgy, which at that time in history was very common. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you remember when they came to Aaron and Moses was in the mountain for 30 days and they said, make us an idol that we can go yeah. back to Egypt with right. our tail between our legs. Yeah. you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the scripture tells us that they rose up to play after they had created this idol. Right. Yeah. That they began to worship this idol mm -hmm. and they rose up to play. That term literally refers to they began to engage in what we would see today or what right. we would call today partying. Uh -huh. okay. mm -hmm. They were having a religious orgy. Yeah. And God looked down and said, I'm going to wipe them out. No, yeah. right. Same exact thing that happened to Sodom. That's Same right. exact thing. Thing that happened to Sodom. The same, not similar, the same exact thing. Sodom was engaging in the identical same, it, it, ex, exactly the same thing. Yeah. A religious, idolatrous orgy. The difference is Sodom did not have an intercessor. Israel did. Yeah. Praise God. Moses interceded Amen. before the Lord yeah. for Israel. Yeah, right. And he wasn't going to let up till God relented. That's right. exactly right. Thank Abraham, yeah, he kind of bargained with the Lord for a little while, mm -hmm. but he stopped at 10. Why did he do that? He knew he had a nephew there. He knew his nephew had a wife. He knew right. his nephew had two daughters and two husbands. Right there, you've got six people. Why didn't he go down to six? Because after all, he knew there were six righteous. Mm -hmm. Or did he? Right. Oh, right. Come on. Right. Okay? So don't mess with me. Don't try to tell me I don't know the Bible and that I need to read these passages that you seem to think you know something about. Sweetie, you don't know nothing. Right. Until Come you on. spend the time right. to investigate. Come on. Yeah. Come on. 
And I'm going to tell you, this old preacher standing up in front of you right now, I spend the time. But you know, the only people who spend the time, listen to me and I promise I'll preach. The only people that spend the time are people who have skin in the game. That is exactly Come on right. Now. If you don't have any skin in the game, if that issue isn't going to mean heaven or hell for you, then you could care less and you're not going to spend time investigating. Right. Right. You're just going to accept what you've heard. Talk about you're just going to accept right. what's been yeah. taught. You're Come just going to accept what everybody's been that telling you. So true. Oh, that is so oh true. but let me tell you, let your kid come out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, Lord Jesus. Right. I'll let you come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you've got skin in the game. All yes. of a sudden yes. now yes. the stakes are higher. That's true. And now you oh, are God. motivated to dig deeper. Yes. Right. Sadly, most Christians have no interest in digging deeper. Right. Now my right. preacher told me it means this, and I'm just gonna believe that. Right. Well, you do that to your damnation. Right. 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 Yeah. You go ahead. Come on now. My Bible said study to show thyself yourself approved. Approved. Right. Don't you yes. Know? See, don't matter what the preacher been telling you. If the scripture says something different, then you need to figure that out. Right. right. We've right. we got too Come many on. Baptists out there in the world today yeah. don't have the Holy Ghost because they're too busy believing what their preacher told them yeah. rather than well, reading the book for right, themselves. Right. All right now. All right, let's right. preach. I'm sorry, I'll keep it short. <laughs> Listen, if y'all can worship for six hours, you can listen to me preach for three. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 through 11, the King James text reads, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Skoko, which belongeth to Judah and pitched between Shoko and Azekah in ephes -Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Mm -hmm. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. This big guy had to have somebody going in front of him. <laughs> and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Mm -hmm. Unto the armies of uh, unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? Mm -hmm. right. And ye servants to Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. Mm -hmm. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Yes, sir. If you'll bow your heads with me a moment, I need God's help. Lord, I need you, Jesus, yes, Master. Yes, yes. This old preacher can be of no benefit to the people of God 
without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I need you, Lord. You've given me a word for this people, for this moment, for this time. I need you to anoint my lips. I need you, Lord, more than this, to anoint the ear of every hearer. Make us ready to hear and receive the word of God. Lord, prepare our hearts. Cultivate the ground that at this moment may be hard, may be full of stones, it may be full of stumps, but by the Holy Ghost you're able to cultivate that ground and prepare it that it might receive the Word of God and that the final result might be fruit unto righteousness for your name's sake. Move mightily right now by the Holy Ghost. For we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 How quickly we draw conclusions based upon size. <laughs> the larger our opponent than the... Uh, I got put on my glasses. <laughs> the larger our opponent, the smaller we get and we feel. The smaller we are in contrast to our opponent, the less likely we are to anticipate victory. All yeah. oh, the children, listen to me today. God is within us. Yes, he is. Even as the fullness of Thank God Lord. was in the man Jesus yes. Christ. We do not need the entirety of the ocean within us to hydrate our bodies right. and to sustain uh, our lives. Uh, but just the smallest glass of water. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. All that chemically constitutes the waters that fill the oceans of our world can be found in a thimble full of water. Mm -hmm. Amen. People true. say, how can the fullness of God dwell in Christ? Very simple. You don't need the whole ocean. Right. Yeah. Come on. You don't need the whole ocean. All you need is a sample of it. Yes. Yeah. And Amen. you can go to any lab and you can test that water and you can know what that entire ocean is made yeah. of. Yeah. 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 You can know chemically what is what constitutes the entirety of that ocean. Do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Come That's on. why the Word of God said Jesus, who is in, not was in, not yeah. will be in, who is in, is. permanently, He is in yes. the present. Now, Amen. when He was walking here, He was. Now, He is still. He yes. is what? He is in the bosom of the Father. Got news for you children. He is not another person sitting at the right hand of right, God. Right. No. no. He is in the bosom of the Father. Amen. And Jesus Christ our Savior is the very heart of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Amen. And the Word was Amen. And Jesus is in the bosom of the Father. Thank but when you Jesus. look that word bosom up in the Greek, I'll tell you, this is what I mean about, oh, dig a little deeper. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, quit reading right. and thinking you know what you read. Right. Do a little digging. Yeah. 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 Look at that word bosom. And it literally refers to a bay of water. You know what a bay of water is? A bay is not a lake. It's not a pond. Right. It's not a tank. No, a bay is a little carved out section of the ocean that is surrounded. There's a little opening that allows the water to come in. But you have this protected area right, right. that is full of ocean water. Mm -hmm. Well, the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in him by. Right. Yes, amen. Yes. Everything in that ocean was in him. Oh, hallelujah. But he's just a bay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus, the man, was just a bay of water. He was yes. just a little sampling yes. of the greater body. Hallelujah. Right. Oh, I want to tell you today, listen to me. Our enemy appears large. And the larger our enemy appears, the smaller we feel. The smaller we feel, the more fearful we become. 
Lord. I have a message from the Holy Ghost for you tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Victory comes, listen to me now, children. Victory comes with shrinkage. All right, all right. All right. Victory comes with shrinkage. All right. The smaller you get, uh -huh. the bigger God gets. Yeah. Christians in our world today, they want to feel powerful. Uh -huh. They want to feel big. Right. Oh, I want to feel like we exercise political influence. That makes us feel big. It is. Mm. Right. Right. But you're not supposed to use those words. Why? They describe them perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> You are the bigger God. Is. Come on, yeah. Yeah. The bigger yeah. you get, listen to me, children. Uh -huh. The bigger you get, the less God uh, can do. Come on. That's, right. That's right. That's right. Come on That's, right. Now. That's true. David. Have no way, Jesus. <laughs> Saul and the armies of Israel thought, well, we can help little David kind of puff himself up a little bit. We can put Saul's armor on him. And we can let him carry Saul's sword. He said, no, no, I can't do that. I hadn't proven this stuff. Right. This, this stuff, this isn't made for me. This don't fit me. We got too many Christians trying to wear stuff that don't fit them. All right, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. No, you're, you're trying to do things from a carnal perspective right. rather than right. the spiritual right. yeah, 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 yeah. From a spiritual perspective. Right. All David needed to do exactly what he did. Right. He needed to go out there dressed like he was watching his daddy's sheep. Yep. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah, but preacher, he, he didn't look very big. He didn't look very formidable. He right. didn't look like he was much of a threat to Goliath. Right. Exactly. Right. That's right. Exactly. Yes. Right, right. Oh, but if you knew what I'm facing, if you knew the trial that I'm going through, if you knew the struggle that I'm experiencing right now, it is so big. It is crushing me. I'm going through one of them right now myself. I've been going through it for several Come months. On. In Jesus' name. It is crushing me. Mm -hmm. It's so big, I don't know what to do. Come on, God. I'll tell you what to do. Victory comes with shrinkage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank what? You. You're telling me to get smaller? Yeah. Come on, amen. amen. We own some property in Oklahoma in the mountains. It's off grid, it's way out in the boondocks. We got all kind of wild animals up there. We've got bobcats. We've got coyotes. We've got wolves. We've got a wild boar. We've got black bear. Ooh. Now they say if you come across a bear, the thing to do is to make yourself look good. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. Well, that's if you're dealing with a bear. Right. When you come against the devil, honey. Just get as small as you please. Right. Yeah. And let God take you. Yeah. 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 Get as small as you please. And let God take you. Let God have mercy. Don't pull yourself out. Don't try to look like something big. Don't try to look like something special. No. Just shrink it up. Say, all right, all right. All right. It's time for you to take this over. When I preach, I, I, a lot of times people come to me later and say, I never in my life thought of it that way. Never don't know me that come way. On. There's a reason the Word of God says, except you may come. Little children. Oh my. Yeah. Little children. As a what? Little children. A little child. Chills. A little yeah. child. The Lord said, That's listen, good. if you're going to make yes, it, yes, yes, if you're going to have victory, yeah. if you're going to walk in victory, yeah. if you're going to defeat the enemy, yeah. let me tell you how you do it. Right. Don't be a great big old grown-up. No. Don't be a big man. Don't be 
you think, woman, no, no, except you become as a little child. Yes. 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 Oh, victory comes yes. with strength. Yes. 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 Shrink yourself yes. down. Yes. Get down into yes. that child. Yes. That is what you are as a follower of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Get down. You know, there's an old saying, there's a, a child within each of us. Yes. yes. Well, spiritually, that is true. Yeah. And all too often when we fight our battles, all too often when we face the enemy and we're struggling against things, we fail to shrink down and occupy that child. Come on, yeah. come yeah. on. No, we, we think we can handle it. I'm an adult. I'm a big boy. I'm a big girl. I can do this. I can handle this. Oh, no, you can't. That's why so many believers wind up getting run over. Come on. They wind up getting crushed True. over and over and over. Yep. And constantly they're in a state of uh -huh. defeat. Come constantly on. they're in a state of depression. Constantly yeah. they feel as though there is no victory for them. Sweetheart, you're just not doing it right. Right. Come but on. Victory Come on. comes with strength. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Our strength as believers lies within our shrinkage. Yeah. Yeah. The more we're able to step out of the way and allow our God to step up on our behalf, the more we grow in strength and might. Amen. Yeah. Even the human hand becomes more potent when it is made smaller. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's so good. Yeah. You can get into a slap fight. <laughs> I, know, I know a lot of queens that's on the way. You can shrink it, uh, make it a little smaller, yeah. but a lot more potent right. and a lot more powerful right. and a lot more accurate. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh children, I want to tell you today, you got to learn this. This is a truth yeah. that is important. Amen. Victory right. comes with shrinkage. Yeah. Ball up your hand into a fist and suddenly you're in a... You're in possession of a formidable weapon. Right. Yeah. Like right. a fist comprised of five tightly balled up fingers. Listen, David chose five stones. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, from the water side. Yes. Uh -huh. With which to come against the foe of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yes. He yes. balled up his fist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The more David tried to enlarge himself and strengthen himself, Putting on the armor of Saul, the weaker he became. Mm. Yes, the sir. more we try to do for ourselves, the weaker we make ourselves. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That so Ephesians true. 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, yeah. it is the gift of God, Amen. not of works, lest any man should boast. The more you try to do for yourself, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. worst position you put yourself in. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. Let God do it. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, Jewish rabbis will tell you David Lord. picked five stones. I will, I've heard I've heard messages my whole life about uh, this story. I've heard preachers use all kinds of allegory and all kinds of explanation for what those five stones represent. Oh, Brother, sure. you can make them five stones represent, you know, five songs if you want uh, to. Right. Yeah. That, right. that, I don't like that kind of preaching. Honestly, yeah. I don't like it because it's pure conjecture. It's, right. you know, right. that, that, there's nothing uh, specifically accurate about that. Right. right. But I'm going to tell you, you ask a Jewish rabbi about what is represented by those five stones, and he will tell you there were five books of the law. <laughs> and the Jews believed that the law was their gift from God. All right. And that it is their gift from God. Those five books represented the most important possession that we have. Well, I've got news for you, honey. Those of us who are New Testament believers have traded in the five books of the yeah, law yeah, yeah, for yeah, the yeah. one God in Christ and Woo! Jesus yeah. is yeah. in Some of these paranormal 
terrible shows on TV uh -huh. where you want to talk about some tomfoolery, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in demons. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. And I believe half of what they're dealing with is demonic. Yes. 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 Well, not half of it, all of it. Believe right. Me. Right. And it always makes me laugh how they try to come against each other. Uh -huh. They don't know what on earth they're doing. No. They're, not, they're not coming from a place of faith. They're not coming no. from a place but sure. of experience. They're just, you know, well, this one says, you know, use sage. And this one says, smoke right. up. And this one says, you know, yeah. go yeah. kiss your mother. And, you know, I mean, they got all these ideas. I, they don't know what they're doing. Right. And the thing that really makes me laugh is when I hear those who are influenced by Catholicism. And they start appealing, St. Michael the Archangel, come on to our rescue, come help us. And I think to myself, oh, child, you don't know. You're calling the wrong name. Right, right. Oh, I got news for you. You're looking to the wrong help. Hey. Michael doesn't answer to you. No. Right. The one he answers to is the one you should be calling. That's right. It'll be Jesus who says it. Michael doesn't answer your prayers. God answers your prayers. You need angels. You don't need to ask for angels. You need to ask for God's help. Yes. And he'll send the help. Yes. And his support. Amen. Amen. Right. You need angels. He'll send angels. Right. You need Michael. Right. Right. He'll send Michael. You need Gabriel. Right. Right. He'll send Gabriel. Right. Right. That's right. Whatever you need, he'll send. But he said, I am the one yeah. that you're to call upon. Amen. Amen. I am the one that you're to rely upon. That's right. Just shrink and get out of my way. Yeah. Just pull yourself together you, and get out of my way. Right. Glory right. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the Jewish rabbi will tell you the five uh, stones represented the five books of the law. In Judaism, the uh, there's a term that is used for God it's Hashem mm -hmm. in the Hebrew and it simply literally means the name that's, that's what it means yeah. but according to the Jewish faith listen to this five is a unifier number mm -hmm. fundamentally not simply quantitatively but it is different than four which represents division Four can be divided in half. Five cannot. Right, right, okay? right. Five is considered a unifier. Five is a unifier and a totality. And the unifying power of five is the reason the divine presence is more manifest in Judaism, according to Judaism, when there are five people present. Interesting. My Lord. Four is the number representing exile, and five is the number representing redemption. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The number five represents the perfection of the natural order. Mm. My Lord, just like the thumb finishes out the hand. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. four fingers, then you got that fifth little guy that finishes out the thing. <laughs> right, That's right. right. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. And you know what? That thumb makes all the difference in the world. It does. Oh, it makes all the difference in the world whether you can pick up things and handle yeah. things yeah. and make tools. Right. And you right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Listen to me now. <laughs> the Torah is made up of five That's books. It's four books, and the fifth book retells the story of the first four. Right. There's a reason for this. You go to my church, you go learn something, because I tell this all the time. I constantly repeat this over and over again. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. That's right. That is how truth is disseminated to God's people according to the Word of God. Right. right. But there is a principle. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Amen. 
So when you read the Old Testament and you say, well, wait a minute, how come this book is just almost identical to that other book? Why am I reading sentence for sentence, line for line, word for word? I'll tell you why. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. God follows his own principles. Amen, that's good. That's good. This is how he establishes this as Fact, not fiction. Right. Truth, not deception. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. So when you read repetition in the Word of God, don't you think for a minute that that is just there, you know, for some odd reason. You can't right. figure out why God did that. No, 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 no. God did that for a reason. Amen. Yes. Amen. Second Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength Mm -hmm. is made perfect in your largeness. No, no. Oh, oh no. no. I'm sorry, I was reading I was reading the version I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to the kitchen. For my strength, this is God speaking, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. weakness yes. My Lord, Victory comes with shrinkage. Hallelujah. The weaker you are, the stronger he is. The, more, the smaller you are, the bigger he is. Yes. My God. Yes. Folks, when are we going to learn yes. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When are we going to learn to get out of God's way? Yeah. And here's a simple phrase. Let God be God. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Let God yes, be God. Yes, yes. Most gladly, therefore, Paul writes, will I rather glory in my infirmities yes. that the power of Christ Amen. may rest yes. upon yes. me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Therefore, I take pleasure in yes. infirmities, Amen. in reproaches, yes. in necessities, in persecutions, yes. in distress yes. for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then he is, is strong. strong. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Then Amen. am I strong. Amen. Then am I strong. Oh, bless Amen. the Lord. The smaller we get, the bigger the Lord becomes. Right, right, right. We do not cower in fear and shrink in cowardice, but rather we step back so that the Lord may step forward Please. on our behalf. Yes. Yeah. Romans 8 uh, verses 33 through 37 who shall lay anything to the charge of God's delight uh -huh. it is God that justifieth yeah. who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died yea rather that yeah. is risen again Woo. who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No. No. Yes. Right. Come on. Shall tribulation, no. or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Yes. Amen. Through Him that loved us. Amen. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. my Lord, we are more than conquerors. Yes. Amen. My Lord, we're bigger than Hitler. Aren't you glad Come for that? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? We got another Hitler on the scene right now. We're bigger than He is in Christ. Thank you. I'm going to tell you something. We need to learn to relax and step back and let God be God. Let yeah. God worship you. Let God do the work. We got we got a mess on our hands in this country if you don't know it, folks. I worship oh, amen. We got, I've been amen. prophesying for 20 years. I kid you not. I've been prophesying for 20 years that there was a plan within the Republican Party to bring our country to the point of civil war. They wanted a civil war based on race. I've been saying this for 20 years. I said at the time, that George W. Bush was their chosen man. They wanted to do with him what they're trying to do with Trump now, but he chickened out. George W. Bush couldn't do it. He could not literally just flip the Constitution on its ear and turn our country into a, 
a nation without a constitution because that's what they want to do. I've been preaching this, folks, for 20 years. I've been saying this. If you knew how many people I've had call me a nut and call me a quack and tell me I was crazy over the last 20 years, if you knew how many arguments I've had with people, no, that isn't so. That isn't true. I said, oh, yes, it is true. Now we got the plan on paper. Project 2025. We got it on paper. We can read it with our own eyes. Yes. I've been saying for 20 years they have that plan. Now people are finally starting to see it. Don't think for a minute anybody's coming to me and telling me, gee, you're right. After all, turns out you're right. No, somehow or another, people always forget stuff you've been telling them for 20 years. Yep. I'm going to tell you something. We're in a dangerous place right now. Yeah. But I also want to tell you, God is bigger than any mountain. Yes, that's a big God. You cannot see. Hallelujah. This is not a time. This is not a time to put your confidence in your vote. Vote. By all means. But don't put your confidence in your vote. Put your confidence in God. Amen. 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 A year before Hurricane Katrina hit, I prophesied in our church in Dallas. I said, next year is going to be one of the bloodiest, most deadly years in American history. I said, there are natural and unnatural disasters yeah. coming. I literally said, there may be a hurricane come through, wipe out half of Louisiana. I literally said those words. I've got it on tape. You can listen to it online if you want to. Said all this about the following year. The next year came, here come Hurricane Katrina. If you remember, Hurricane Katrina was the only trouble we had that year. Mm -hmm. My Lord, have mercy. No, sir. There were all kinds of things going along. One of the things I said while I was preaching, I said there may be a, a storm come through that will uh, flood half of Michigan. And a man that was a member of my church up north when I was pastoring up north, he called me and he said, you, you know that message you preached where you said that a storm may come through by flood half of Michigan? He said, I just wanted to call and tell you it happened. Oh, wow. He said a storm came off of the Great Lakes. See, it's so funny when we live in different parts of the country, we never hear about certain things, you know, doesn't make the national news. Yeah. He said a storm, it was what the scientists said was a freak storm. They had never seen anything like it. He said it literally came off of the Great Lakes and it wound up flooding half of the state of Michigan. I said, man, I didn't hear anything about that. He said, I know you didn't. That's why I wanted to call and tell you. He said, because I heard you preach that very thing. <clears throat> I want to tell you, children, today, we're in a place right now, the enemy's looking pretty big. Things are looking pretty rough. This is not a time to try to take matters into our own hands. Yeah. This is not a time to assume that we have the power. Right. My Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. Do what you can. But trust God yes. Yes. with the yes. result. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's right. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't ever want to be, I don't ever want to be one of these characters who's running around trying to uh, falsify elections and do things with elections to win them falsely. There are too many Christians in our world today, Tim, they're of the mind that as long as we win, doesn't matter how we do it. Doesn't matter how we go about it. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Listen. I don't know why I'm saying this. I promise you I don't. This situation today is not by any means something new. Don't kid yourself. I was a Republican. I registered Republican when I registered to vote in the 1980s. Uh, Ronald Reagan was running for re-election. That tells you how old I am. <laughs> and I wanted to be in the party of Reagan. I love grandfatherly Ronald Reagan. You know, that man, I'll tell you, you talk about somebody who spoke positive. You talk about somebody who spoke in uplifting terms. You didn't hear him talking about the other side like they were a bunch of trash and they were a bunch of vermin and they were a bunch of this and that. Right. You never heard Ronald Reagan talk like that. Yeah. 
No. no, Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill said a ring one time. He said, I'll tell you one thing about old Rodney. He said, you can dislike his politics all you want. He said, but don't go and he's a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was a time in American politics where uh, either side understood we may have different views, we may have different approaches, and we're all fighting to get it done our way. But... I watched the Republican Party digress over the years, and I jumped off the ship after a while because I said, you know what, no, there's some mentality here, win by any means necessary. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you something, you ain't going to get me to vote for a Mormon. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to be plain, I'm going to talk plain. Hmm. You're not going to get me to vote for a Mormon just because he shares my, quote, values. No, there was a prophecy come off the lips of the founder of Mormonism that one day a Mormon would be elected president and he would save the country. Mm, yep. So when you vote for old uh, Mitt Romney, you know what you're doing? You are validating Mormonism. You are making people believe that Mormonism is just another Christian faith. That man, if he had gotten elected, I guarantee you the boost that Mormonism as a religion would have gotten out of him being elected president is mind-blowing. But Christians in America have been supporting anybody. Right. Anybody. As long as they got a little R behind their name. That's been what's going on in America, folks. And I've watched it. I sat there and watched it. I said, look at this. They don't care if the man's a dingling and hadn't got the IQ of a P. If you don't know what I'm talking about, George W. They don't care if the guy's a Mormon and they're going to put a seal of approval on one of the largest, most deceitful, most demonic, <laughs> most antichrist doctrine in the world. They don't care. They don't care. They want to win. And they want to win by any means necessary. And we have watched them do this over and over and over again. We had, eight years ago, I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost <laughs> told me. So if anybody wants to argue with me, you talk to God about it. Don't talk to me, because I'm not going to hear you. The Holy Ghost told me, I'm not talking foolishness. So I'm not up here talking politics because I want to talk politics. The Spirit of the Lord told me, he said, Donald J. Trump was a test run for the Antichrist. Oh. And the church failed. They demonstrated that the Antichrist would receive their full support, their full throttled support, as long as he could make them feel like they were going to win. It's dangerous, folks, when we get the mindset that we can support somebody wicked and evil and ungodly without morals, without decency, without ethics, without integrity, without a lack of compassion for a soul on this planet. It's a pretty dangerous thing when you can support somebody like that because you want to feel like you won. No, no, no. Victory comes with shrinkage. You need to get out of God's way. You need to be able to say, you know what? If the rest of the world wants to support this person in this party, I can't do it. I cannot do it. I'm going to stand alone because I'm a child of God. I don't go along with the way. I don't go along with the current. If I have to swim against the current, I'm going to swim against the current. But I'm going to do what's right. Yes. Every time. Yes. Because as the child of God, we're called to holiness. Yes. And we're called to godliness. Yes. And that means we've got to do right even when we fear. Well, but bless God, I'm not going to win. We're not going to be winners if I do right. Mm. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> Only problem is you're going to be a winner in the right place. Amen. You're going to be a winner in God's eyes. That's yeah. right. The world may look at you and say, well, you don't have any political clout. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares what the world thinks? That's right. I've been trying to tell people since I pastored my first church. I told folks when I pastored my first church, I said, listen, don't you ever go out in front of an abortion clinic and pick at an abortion clinic as a member of this church. I don't want anybody from my church represented in front of an abortion clinic. 
I don't care what you feel about the issue. I don't care what your thoughts are. I don't care what your conviction is. God's people do not peddle in guilt mongering. We do not peddle in accusation. Those are things that are contrary to the nature of God's people. We don't do that. You don't know what that young lady's yeah. going through. You don't That's know true. why she's making That's the decision true. she's making. That's true. You don't know what's happening in her life. God's people, according to my Bible, maybe I'm reading it wrong, we're supposed to love. Ooh, yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 That's what I see. Yes. That's yeah. true. Yes. I, I had women when I was pastoring my first church come to me and tell me, I've had an abortion. And they said, oh, I feel so bad because I've had an abortion. I said, well, don't. Don't. Today's a new day. That's Every right. day with God, His mercies are all brand new. Yeah, said, right. you don't have nothing. <laughs> said, honey, you need to quit living in yesterday and get up into today. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because God's mercy, His grace, His love is there for you today. Let's not worry about past decisions. Yes, if I want to go down the list, I can tell you all kind of past decisions I made that were bad decisions. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all kind of things I've done that I ought not to have done. Amen. Mm -hmm. Things I've said I shouldn't have said. Mm -hmm. sure. But thank God for grace. Yes. Amen. Thank Amen. God for that's what grace is there for. Yes. Grace, grace does not make us perfect. Grace makes up for the fact that we are imperfect. That's Amen. right. Amen. My Lord have mercy. Oh, children, I want to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to shut up and call it to a close. I don't want to keep you all night. <laughs> and I want to tell you tonight, victory comes with shrinkage. This is what the Holy Ghost sent me to tell you tonight. Don't feel like you have to somehow rise to the occasion in order to win the battle. You don't need to rise to the occasion. You need to step back. You need to learn to step back. You need to learn to get out of God's way yeah. because God is the one who can take the smallest of stones. You know, the, I love the story of Goliath because he had all this armor and he had an armor bearer in front of him and he had this big old spear and all he was just so prepared, you know. And he had this breastplate on him. Says he had a breastplate, you know, to protect him. <laughs> and I just see David going up there saying, that's all right, that's not where I'm aiming anyway. <laughs> <laughs> church goes into the battle and we're trying to do it on our own. Yeah. And we've got to come up against that first place. That's right. We've got to come up against that helmet. We've got to come up against that chain mail. Alright? But listen, God said, no, 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 leave it to me. I'll make sure that stone finds its way to the perfect spot. That's right. You know, the enemy loves to paint a big old Target. Bullseye target on him. Bible said that Goliath had a target, right? His west brain, there was some target on it. So he was just begging people, shoot me here, shoot me here. Let me tell you something, and I, I promise I'm going to shut up. But let me tell you something. Don't ever let the enemy tell you how to fight the battle. Right. Come on. Don't ever let him tell you how to Come define on. the terms of warfare. Come on. Right, right. Goliath got out there and said, Hey, you send me out one man, and if I win, then you'll serve us there. Hey, devil, don't tell me how to fight this battle. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're stupid enough to get out there in the middle of the valley, I'll send out a whole ten dozen men against you, and they'll kill you, and guess what? Their strongest man will no longer be available to fight. That's right. Then let's see how this battle goes. Do you follow what I'm saying? But yep. we have a habit of letting the enemy define the battle for us. Mm -hmm. he How many times somebody says to you, well, if you were really a Christian. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. You that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you were really a Christian, you'd do it this way. Oh, no, 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 honey. Oh, no, no. I don't let the enemy That's right. I don't let the enemy tell me how to fight the battle. I don't let the enemy tell me how to fight the battle. That's right. Don't you stand there and try to define the rules of warfare for me. If you're dumb enough to get out here and challenge me, I'm going to answer that challenge whatever way I feel I need to. Yes. Amen. Saul could have sent out a whole army against yep. that 
giant, that giant could have been slain in a matter of minutes and then the, the, the war would have been even. But instead, he let Goliath define the terms. He allowed Goliath to define the terms. I'll tell you, too many of us, we let the enemy define the terms. We let them tell us how we need to fight this battle. Here's, here's what you need to do if you're going to win. No, they have got news for you. I don't need to do that at all. All I need to do is shrink. Yep. Praise God. All I need to do is get smaller. All I need to do is get out of God's way. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Victory comes with strength. Amen. 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 What are you going to tell somebody next time they try to stay in your lane? Let's <laughs> 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 hear the name of God.